I'm not taking your advice if you ain't hopped off the porch. I'm not taking your advice because I'm on my own course. You stay yelling from the stands, but you ain't stepped on the court. I love pulling niggas' cards, yeah, I do it for sport. Straight G up in First the sheets, from with Allow the me to introduce myself. My name is Amber J. Phillips. Also known as Amber Abundance. Also known as the High Priestess of Black Joy. And you might be wondering, why? What, what's happening here? Well, I have teamed up. Let me let this, this plane pass. We're doing a live comedy album, y'all. It's live. Everything you hear is authentic to my, my block. I'm coming at you live from Los Angeles, California. And I have teamed up with four other talented, brilliant, black futurist creators and culture organizers. And we are creating new pieces of work in 24 hours, all for the sake of raising money for the Highlander Center, the legendary, the iconic, the historic Highlander Center. Um, you know, uh, Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks and them used to sit in those rocking chairs and sing songs uh, and just plot on just fucking this whole shit up. So we're, we're continuing that legacy through art and organizing of just, you know, let's fuck shit up. Let's create some stuff. So I've decided my contribution will be a live comedy album because I've always wanted to do a live comedy album. But, you know, I needed some fire under my ass to really get it done. It's going to be more of a live comedy EP because they only really gave your girl 10 minutes. Or I only really got 10 minutes to tell y'all some shit real quick, you know. That's what we're going to do. Anyway, so I want to start here. So <laughs> if you don't know what year this is, I'm speaking to the future. Y'all, we're in 2020. And it's just been a really fucked up year. Like... Basically, we're in 2020. We're in this thing called quarantine um, because of this cute little new talent on the scene, Miss Rona, Miss Coronavirus, COVID-19. She's a girl by many names, but she is a girl who made the world stop. So, you know, I'm, I'm single in quarantine. I really like dating um, as an adult. I feel like I really did it wrong when I was in my 20s, especially. But now that I'm in my 30s, you know, um, there's more of a budget. You don't really accept chicken wings and pizza anymore. That's that's later when you're like being cute and in the house. But I love dating. I'm single. I'm a queer, as you can tell by my skin. <laughs> Flawless. What pores. Um, but, you know, Miss Rona really put a, a pause on all that. You know, so we're single in quarantine and I've been hearing a lot of people talk about what, what does that mean for dating and intimacy? So much so one of my single icons, Miss um, Gail King, you know, she was, she did an interview and she called it daunting. She's like, being single in quarantine is daunting because you don't know when it will end. You know, before this, I had a life. My best friend's Oprah. Know you had a good life. But I just want to remind y'all, my, my single folks, my single black folks that remember why you're single. I know this is a new world. You did not expect to be in the house for the unforeseeable future. But just remember that you chose this life because you don't want somebody all up in your shit. Remember that the next time you go to the fridge and your shit ain't missing. You know, you don't have to only be in the house with someone who you kind of sort of like. You know, you don't have to go through that. That's what couples is going through right now. They they arguing their asses off, just old shit. Just coming up now because they got time and just energy to think about it. You know, we tend to um, aspire to be in relationships. But I think the quarantine, we really got to see the upside of that shit. Because that first bite of sex once we get out, oh, that first hint a pussy once you leave oh my god these couples ain't gonna know that kind of joy so you about to experience some shit you ain't never experienced before a bite of sex after three months alone oh my god it's gonna be a vibe i want y'all to remember that i'm a i'm a mm, i'm gonna heat some of mine up to go when i get mine i'm gonna have leftovers i'm a i'm a savor it it's, it's gonna be nice but speaking of relationships, you know, also during Miss Rona's reign, 
Uh, we're in a whole uprising. A couple weeks ago, black folks have been taking to the streets to protest police brutality again. You know, we're, we're back to doing that. Um, and rightly so, because, you know, being in the house, I'm, I'm, I'm staying here because white folks still, they just have lost it. And they operating by the same rules, just still killing niggas. But the thing I find interesting is now we're not only saying, you know, black people are human beings who matter. Like, that's the bare minimum. Of course, my life fucking matters. Do you see me? Have you seen me? But now we're also calling to defund the police. And everybody, when they hear defund the police, they're like, what do you mean defund the police? You know, you know what defund means. You understand that. Speaking of relationships, it's like you can't just reform a toxic ass relationship. You know what I mean? You just can't hope for better. Keep putting that shit in classes. You got to you got to defund it first. You know, you got to start there. Cut off the, the Netflix password. Start changing changing shit around. Stop taking people out to dinner and shit. When you got a toxic relationship, you got to slowly pull those resources away from that shit that's draining you. So y'all know what defund mean? Don't act like you don't know. What does it look like to defund? You know, you start cutting shit off and then you get to abolition. You just got to start over. You got to get rid of the whole shit and get something new up in here. You know, get under something more valuable, more, more worthy, treats you better. So put it in that context. Think about those, those relationships you kept trying to breathe new life into to no avail. That, that's, that's my defund and reform and abolish argument. You know, you start, can't reform, we already tried that shit. Then you start to defund and then you move on to the abolishment. Place it with a whole new nigga. We're gonna allow that play in the past too. I told you, we doing a live comedy album. It's lit out here. You know, let's take a let's take a rose water break. Cause it's it's also hot out here, nigga. Damn. Whew. You know, I, I want I want nothing more than for some of y'all to abolish some of these relationships. I really want you to abolish heteronormativity. Abolish heterosexuality in general. It's also pride. Let's remember that. It's pride for black people. White people, y'all can't celebrate pride this year. You didn't know what to do with it. You you didn't want to recite your history well, so this one's ours. Shout out to us. Another thing people always ask me, do black feminists hate black men? Do we hate black men? Oh my God. Of course. These niggas suck. Can't say you hate black men in the middle of an uprising when black men are being killed by the police, bitch, me too. The police ain't this, this, they see me, they see you. We all getting killed, all right? But the the kicker is you niggas got the nerve to put your hands on us amongst the revolution. Just whole marches going on, Black Lives Matter. And a group of y'all just, just beating on people, beating on black trans women, beating on cis black women. Like, y'all just don't know how to act. Even before we get to the violence, you niggas be just emotionally abusive. So yeah, I can't stand y'all, but it's all things you can change. Keep your hands to yourself. Be emotionally available, cry. Then ask me if, if I give a fuck about y'all's life. Then I'll let you know, shit. You know, and as we're building this new world, we gonna have to come up with some new systems to deal with y'all in addition to education. So I think as we're thinking about our new places, as we're getting our new condos built in liberation, we should we should consider, um, I'm gonna call it the Miss Sophia Justice League. I'm tired of talking, it's time to whip some ass. Some of y'all gonna have to get your ass whipped. How are you gonna protect black women in a family full of men without whooping some ass every now and then? And I know Black women, we deserve to be cared for and held and honored, but sometimes we're gonna, we gonna have to whip some ass too. Somebody gonna have to do it, cause y'all know how to act. You know who is fine, like truly just fine as fuck? Miss Jill Scott, god damn. The thing I love about Jill Scott, she looks like she is a black feminist. She got that black feminist body, just waist in, god damn. She looks soft, just soft. Jill Scott, to me, she looked like she's just about to ruin my life right, right after she's done leading the 
We have nothing to lose but our chains chant. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. Can you imagine Jill Scott saying that to you? It is our duty to win. The thing about Jill Scott though is nobody loves black men more than Jill Scott. So y'all don't have to worry about whether or not I'm nice to black men because y'all got Jill Scott and she loved every single song is about black men. She loves y'all so much. You know, sometimes black men, they can't really hear you unless you're like being super nice to them. You know, you got to cook them a plate, all this other shit that they don't know how to do for themselves. And I feel like Jill Scott gives that essence, you know. So we need her. We need someone like her to really use her talents and skill sets to teach these niggas about toxic patriarchy. You know what I mean? Can you imagine? Can you imagine that? Like, can you really picture a, a black feminist transformative justice Jill Scott just coming to the stage, giving you body, looking like she smell good? She hit you with one of these. I was just thinking about you. Wondering if you still ain't shit. <laughs> Lying, cheating, driving these black girls mad. You know what they say. <laughs> these niggas are for everybody. <laughs> Even you. Yes, you with the with the degree, the car, the hard bottom shoes. You ain't shit too. I'm just tired of the way y'all treat black women. Yes, I know you're struggling. Everybody fighting for you. But what about me? What about how you treated me at home? What about how you treated your, your, your ex? I know if I pick up this bat, <laughs> light this match, pull out this knife, I know I'm gonna beat some ass. My homegirl gonna beat some ass. <laughs> My name is Amber Phillips at Amber Abundance on Instagram and the interwebs. I hope to see you on the freedom side, the black hand side, the feminist abolitionist transformative justice side. All right. Also, before I go on, I just wanted to add this little PSA, this little church announcement, that as we are building a new world, I just, I'm gonna say it now, so y'all not surprised when I start the organizing group and liberation, but if all the leadership is light-skinned, I'm not about to do that with y'all over in Freedom. I'm not going all the way to liberation for all the leadership to be beige, okay? I'm saying this specifically because of that Juneteenth versus. Y'all know y'all was wrong. Why I gotta look at John Legend and Alicia Keys on the blackest holiday of the year? Y'all couldn't find nobody else? Just John Legend and his criminal justice reform music? I understand. I understand Alicia Keys and Michelle um, Obama keep using that girl on fire track, but you know, damn. Is it, can we get Chica or somebody? Anybody. Can we just mix it up? Can it be darker than a brown paper bag? That's all I'm asking if there's space for me in liberation because I'm, I'm not going to do a repeat of what we just am trying to abolish and get rid of. So that's my PSA. <laughs>